How's it going, everyone? In this video, I'm actually going to be giving away a keyboard. So stay tuned to the end to find out how to get that. It's really simple. Um, I just wanted to do something for you guys. I feel like every day over the past couple of months has been some negative thing in the PC world. If you want to see something positive, we have a lot of cool stuff lately. So the Antex C8 review is pretty positive. I'm going to be trying to do some giveaways on the channel every once in a while. So stay tuned for that. This right here is a GTX 1080 Ti blower from Asus. Wow. I got this on the Facebook Marketplace for $100, and I noticed something right away that was pretty unusual for me, and that is this seal right here on the screw. And if you can see it there, it's actually not broken, which simply means this card has never been repasted for the seven years that it existed on the market. And so I actually punched this in on the Asus website as well to see if it was that old. And sure enough, it showed up as a 2017 card a couple months after launch. Now, this is not going to be a benchmark video to see how the 1080 Ti runs in 2024. There are tons of those videos out there right now. Um, this is going to be more just to test thermal paste to see how well seven year old crusty thermal paste holds up. There's actually some content out right now talking about the 40 series having some really bad paste on their AI be partners and people are complaining about it so I'm really curious how a card this old actually holds up and then we're gonna put some new paste on it and see if we can see any changes since this abomination of a video is just a short fun let's figure out what happens type of video I'm gonna be using this older test bench setup um, I know it's not modern and not gonna push the 1080 Ti to its limits but it almost doesn't matter because we're gonna be running synthetics not any gaming or anything like that so I know that the card will go to 100% also with the uh, cables I have here I needed to use an extension just because my white cables do not come apart they are designed for eight pins only so yeah that's why it looks like a trashy uh, slut yep and uh, yeah so let's get into the temps just real quick before we jump into this too ideally you would want to use a card with like a two or three fan solution these blower cards are designed to actually max out their temperature um, they don't always do that I've had founders edition cards uh, be plenty fine and stay within like 80 to 75 C so let's just test this out and see what it does anyways by adding new paste all right, we are just finishing up with the Super Position Benchmark. This is actually a great benchmark for older cards. It pushes stuff like the 1080 Ti to the limit. And uh, yeah, just something to use in the future if you are if you have an older card. All right, so let's see what we got for a average temperature across the board. Looking like about max 87C with a minimum of 46. Up next, we have the Furry Donut, or the Death of All GPUs benchmark. This is an old school benchmark, if you haven't seen it before, but it's one of those benchmarks that really pushes the card to the limit. Um, I love using this for older hardware to really stress test things like the RX 580 and whatever. So you're gonna see in this benchmark, we're gonna hit around 85, 86, um, even up to 87C, and then the hotspot hits about 100C. Uh, it's a really good benchmark to do this kind of testing on but um, I'm not gonna run it too, too long. It ramps up right away to that 100C spot. All right, so this might be a little bit untraditional, but just these two benchmarks are actually enough to get enough information to see if this card will do any better by just putting new paste on it. So we're gonna tear it down right now. A uh, little tip for you guys too, if you run into these stupid connectors, this one right here was driving me insane. You can just take some uh, needle nose pliers and kind of push it up from the bottom. Um, the thermal pads on this GPU were still very good. The paste was a little bit on the crusty side. It did come off. Um, it was still doing its job, believe it or not. And you're gonna see that in a few minutes. Putting some new paste, a lot on there. Uh, spreading it out as usual. And yeah, we're gonna throw the card back together, pop it in the system, and let's check out the temperature differences here. So I did run this test a few times and the scores were a little bit all over the place. We did score a bit lower here. There will be a variance of about 50 points, but we did get one degree Celsius lower. But pay attention to that minimum uh, number there, 41 versus the higher 46 to 45. So we lost a little bit of the GPU minimum temperature, but our maximum temperature because of this being a blower card is still really just not that great. We 86, 
Um, I wish it was a better cooler, but this is what I get to work with. Up next, we got the Furry Donut Furmark Benchmark back, and this one was a little bit interesting. We saw a lower temperature of around 84 to 85, and then the hot spot temperature was actually 98. So we did drop two degrees Celsius. Um, we're also seeing 100% usage, whereas last time we were only seeing 99%. I'm not sure why that is happening, but other than that, we're seeing a very, very small difference here. Not a big difference. So while making this video, I did test a few other things like games and stuff, and I saw a very consistent pattern. And the thing is about blower cards is that they love to go to the max temperature they can go to and then just exhaust all that air out. And anytime you change that max temperature, you're gonna to start to see like a slightly lower score. And that is why I think it's better to actually use a car that has like a two or three fan configuration from an AIB to get a real sample of what changing the thermal pace will do. I thought this would make a, a huge difference after all these years. Seven years is a long time to not change thermal paste, but I can guarantee you it's still something you should be doing about every three to four years. Seven years is really pushing it. Um, I'm surprised it stayed this good. But that being said, I think now is a good time to talk about the giveaway. So this is a Warmier K66 keyboard. It's a little bit older, but I actually never used it. It's been just sitting on my wall of keyboards. It has a bunch of Gateron and Duroc switches in there. I don't remember the Duroc switch. The Gateron's are yellow. Um, I was gonna use these keycaps, but they kind of were a little bit girly. So decided to go with this more uh, retro, kind of beige and gray themed ones. They have a bunch of different markings all over them. They're pretty cool. So I'm gonna throw that in there. You'll also get the whole set of keycaps too. Um, I am keeping this within the United States and Canada. I'm sorry guys, it's just so hard. I tried shipping to India last time and it was a huge thing. Also the guy tried to scam me. Um, I know who you are, man. Anyway, back to how to enter. It's pretty simple. All you have to do is drop a comment down below and like the video and you can sub if you want. Um, I would love to discuss the Intel situation if you guys wanna talk about what your feelings are on that because that's been a major topic lately. Um, I do not believe that next month in August when they decide to drop their fix, that that's gonna be the final fix. I just, I've had this feeling that there's something way more wrong with these CPUs and uh, I don't know, it's just something I've talked about. I've talked about it with Tech yes City. I've talked about it with a lot of my other tech friends. And um, yeah, I'm a little bit worried that it's not looking good. So yeah, if you wanna talk about that, whatever you wanna talk about, I'm all ears. I love listening to you guys comment down below. And uh, until the next video, I'll see you guys later. Peace.